Graphene is a unique nanoscale form of carbon that is disrupting legacy materials, bringing step change improvements in performance across a wide range of industrial and consumer applications. From energy storage and electronics to everyday materials, graphene enables products that are better, stronger and lighter while increasing durability and improving sustainability. Graphene is leading the era of new advanced materials. The following is a presentation that was given as part of a two-day virtual Graphene Investors Conference hosted by the Graphene Council. Thanks very much for having me, Terence. Uh, Graphene Manufacturing Group is a near 80-year-old Australian public company. We're listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange Ventures, also on Trade Gate in Frankfurt, as well as now on OTCX. Uh, so just uh, usual disclaimer for forward-looking statements for high-growth companies like ourselves. And we are a business that are focused on uh, clean technology uh, and producing graphene and then using that graphene for three uh, different products. Uh, the first one is a heat exchange coating system, which is in full production and in sales and in now uh, in various countries around the world. Uh, a second one is a graphene lubricant additive, uh, which is also in uh, production, and then a graphene aluminium ion battery or aluminum ion battery, which is um, in development phase. Uh, we've been focusing on graphene uh, through our own proprietary process now for more than seven years, uh, which we built uh, from um, uh, our, our oil and gas knowledge, uh, the, the the process that we use to make graphene from natural gas allows us to create the graphene that goes into these different products. You heard Terence talk about how there are many different processes and there are many different graphenes. Our graphene is very suitable towards these different three uh, types of applications. One is heat transfer, and one is lubrication, and one is uh, ion storage for batteries, and that's why we chose this. Also, uh, the background to the founders, including myself, uh, was uh, in the uh, in the oil and gas industry. I was 20 years in Shell. Um, so the transition of the energy industry is obviously a um, much easier known target for us as well. So just going through our production capacity, so we take natural gas, we make graphene through the plasma system that we, we created ourselves. Then we have hydrogen as a byproduct. And then we go into the uh, three different plants that we're, we've got uh, proposed. One's already been built, which we uh, commissioned end of last year, which is a heat exchange coating system. A uh, blending plant, which should be about a million litres per annum. Um, then uh, we already have a small-scale plant for graphene lubricants, but by the end of... Uh, uh, this year, we aim to have a graphene lubricant plant, bone plant up and running, or a larger one. And then uh, we are proposing right now to have an automated pilot plant for our aluminium ion technology, um, which we'll talk about shortly, uh, which should be somewhere between one to three and a half megawatt hours per annum of production. It's the first plant stage um, of a battery uh, as you progress it, which we'll go through. Uh, this is us switching on. We've worked how to do photos and press releases of trade secrets. You put the team in front of the technology. <laughs> so you get to see that we've actually built something, but then you don't get to see what we've built. Um, the trade secret for our ability to take natural gas into uh, uh, graphene and hydrogen is obviously very um, important to our business. And it's about six years now. It's fully automated. Uh, now, we'll have another 20 or so plasmas, which we can add to this one shed um, that we've already got approval for. If I can show you, uh, this next slide just shows you uh, what our, our operating uh, 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 our buildings are like. So building four is where our graphene plant is, uh, natural gas straight into there, then our blending plants are there. Building five is where our building, uh, our battery development center already is, and we'll be planning to build the, or we're planning to build the automated pilot plant uh, for our battery there, and that's where our headquarters is as well. 
So what we'll be seeing is progressively uh, building out our production capacity because it's a modular capacity for our graphene production. And then uh, bringing through uh, sales, which I'll go through in various channels of our thermal XR and our G lubricant, and then developing our uh, battery plant. Um, so the, the plan for the end of this uh, two years is to have a fully developed battery uh, blend and graphing uh, plant all integrated uh, in, our, in our plant here in Brisbane, Australia. So Thermal XR uh, is uh, being distributed uh, in a number of countries. This is our graphene coating. Um, we already have uh, a, a major distributor in New Palgon set up. Uh, we're going through EPA approval, which I'll talk about shortly. And uh, in other countries, including Australia, we already have a number of sales uh, in, in different sectors. Um, and uh, the distributors are showing uh, already you know, the ability to expand into other countries. So what does Thermal XR do? Uh, it basically increases heat transfer of the uh, across the heat exchange system. Uh, and it provides also a corrosion resistance, which is um, also very uh, uh, long uh, duty cycle. We're seeing uh, in, in energy savings uh, with respect to uh, air conditioning units, usually some between five and 10% on brand system. On older systems, you could be aftermarket systems, you're talking maybe 20% uh, savings. In data centers, you're seeing around 16% energy saving. We just recently won an award last week in Washington, D.C. for data centers for most um, uh, disruptive product, um, which is the coding of our, of the thermal XR onto the condenser coils. Also, you see it in large bus and transport uh, rail systems for air conditioning, reducing the cost there. And we're in currently testing with large global manufacturers of both buses and trucks. We also have project rolled out into an LNG plant, which is basically a large heat exchanger. And, and that has been quite successful, 16%. Uh, we'll, we'll to do the rest of that later this year. We're talking to some large LNG plants on how we can help them increase their production and reduce corrosion. Here's an example of the third party testing showing blue coil on a condenser uh, unit showing uh, a when we put our black graphene coating there uh, with about a 16% reduction in pull down time to get to temperature and over the 48 hours of 5%, uh, roughly 5% um, energy saving. Uh, that's with our coating sprayed onto an existing blue coating. Uh, and basically the older the system, uh, the better. Uh, uh, it's, um, and it's obviously uh, sprayed on in situ on site. G lubricant performance, a very quick quick note. I was actually once uh, the lubricants uh, engineer and lubricants marketing manager for Shell, so I know a bit about uh, lubricants. And um, we've been working with lubricants for probably close to six years now. Uh, and we have this uh, performance uh, of this product um, basically close to uh, our final outcome. And we've been testing with a lot of different companies around the world. Uh, and we'd see generally a, a reduction of friction for the engine, a uh, reduction in wear, and generally a reduction in fuel as well. Um, the numbers can be quite high uh, on fuel savings. The older the equipment, the better. Um, and it's basically increasing the uh, boundary, la boundary layer lubrication zone on the pistons, which is then providing less fuel required to move the piston. It's quite simple, but... Um, it's, uh, it's because of the graphene we have again. Um, it's 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 very very much suited towards this uh, because of our oil knowledge as well. We were able to make this. Um, all been working with this space for many years of knowledge. Thanks, Terence. So let's talk about our battery, which is probably the one thing that a lot of people want to talk to us about um, more than the others. Um, We've got a joint development agreement with Rio Tinto, which is, of course, one of the largest mining companies in the world, uh, with our graphene aluminium mine battery. Uh, they want to use it in their large trucks and also 
Um, there are other applications, including grid energy storage. They've got preferential access rights, excuse me, to use it in, in mining and, and minerals. And we're working through uh, building the, the cell to, to work in that environment. Uh, next slide, please. So it's a typical build-up scale of batteries. So we've taken, you know, we've made thousands of coin cells. We've done the single layer pouch cells, then five to 10 layer pouch cells. Then we're up to 10 to 15 layer pouch cells. And we hit our one amp power target. Um, and now we're sitting and waiting for the pilot plant. We build that. We send that out to customers thousands a week. And then we look at a large commercial factory. Very likely that will be in America because um, our main cost of uh, goods um, or materials is actually natural gas, which, of course, your country now has, uh, and Canada has, um, you know, basically the, the largest gas reserves and, and production now um, as of this year, I believe. So our, our natural home for this business is, is in America. Um, and, you know, we have a, a very simple supply chain um, where it becomes a strategic advantage to actually have lots of gas to make these batteries. Uh, next slide, please. So a bit of a um, an overview of performance. Now, the, the reason why we have companies like Rio Tinto and lots of other companies with very high power demands is that our power density is basically a supercapacitor. Uh, it's, it's able to have similar energy density to lithium, um, but it's the power density as people come after us. Um, and we get lots of requests uh, and from very large companies. Uh, Al uh, Rio Tinto being one of the largest aluminium suppliers in the world, is obviously very keen to get an aluminium battery out. <laughs> so um, that's why they're obviously involved in public. But a lot of companies want to be quite confident, confidential about their battery tech. Um, so, but yeah, we're obviously looking at some um, further joint venture partners uh, in this space. Obviously, aluminum is 1,000 times more available and 10 times cheaper usually than lithium. Um, and then there's obviously much lower cost and less complicated supply. Our cathode is only graphene and metal foil. Our anode is nothing but foil. We have no coating on it. And we're up to 60 times faster charging there are no risk of electrochemical fires and um, actually quite long battery life as well. Uh, the next slide, please. So where are we at? We're at battery technology readiness level four, which means we're uh, working through electrochemical uh, uh, optimization of the, of the pouch cells. Um, you can see a semi-automatic stacker there. Uh, once we have gone through that, we'll then be regressing into the uh, production process uh, for the cells and scaling that. The unique thing about our battery is even though it's using aluminium ions and not lithium ions, is that we use exactly the same process as a lithium ion battery. So we have all the same equipment to scale the, the production and that is one of the real advantages our battery has, despite being quite disruptive or very disruptive um, with graphene or carbon natural gas and aluminum being the only main things to need to make the battery, uh, we also have a very easy scale-up outcome, which has been already a, a reason why we've got so fast, so so far, so fast. So we've got now sitting with uh, various different types of battery opportunities. Um, here is one showing the thermal management opportunity uh, where you've got a very a lithium battery sitting at 60 degrees, uh, whereas our battery is being charged at 20 times normal uh, rate, sitting at 31 degrees. So this will likely mean no battery cooling and many other improvements, um, and and this will flow on to other uh, opportunities. Next slide, please. Now, our simplicity is absolutely the key to our battery, and if you can go to the next slide, it will show that our advantages provide um, many things for our battery to scale fast, including our, our structural cost advantages. And this will be the last slide, which will show that we have a very uh, simple structure to a plant to, to build these, three hours to actually form them, whereas most uh, lithium batteries take two weeks. So in being able to scale this battery, uh, once we get the electrochemical optimization, which we aim to do this year, 
um, the path for um, leaf resistance is now going to be, you know, building these plants. Um, that concludes the presentation. Thanks, Terence. Thank you, Craig. Um, we'll have your contact information uh, distributed. Thank you very much for the presentation um, and for joining us. For more information on market opportunities and to connect with experts, contact the Graphene Council at thegrapheneCouncil.org.